So now we're going to shift gears a little bit to something called index fossils. Now index fossils are very specific fossils that are used for scientists to identify certain geologic periods of Earth's history. Now here's an example of a um, index fossil. This specific fossil is called Bothriolepis, but its category is a placoderm fish. This organism lived about 350 million years ago. Another example of an index fossil is a trilobite. Specifically, this fossil is called Phacops. This fossil lived 400 million years ago. If you were to find one of these fossils in a layer of rocks, since they're index fossils, you would be able to determine the relative age of that rock layer because of that index fossil. Now, not every fossil can be an index fossil. Index fossils are geologic time markers. And to be an index fossil, you need to have two specific characteristics. The first characteristic is the fossil must be widespread. That means it needs to be found over a large geographic area. The fossil must only have existed for a short period of time in Earth's history. Our best example in the future of index fossils are actually going to be humans. First of all, humans are found all over the world. We're found on every single continent. So we are definitely widespread. We take up a large geographic area. And in the grand scheme of things, humans are, have only existed for a really short time in Earth's history. We have not been around forever. So those are two characteristics of an index fossil. So we're going to go through an example of how to identify an index fossil from different diagrams. So we need to know which letter, W, X, Y, or Z, represents an index fossil. But I need you to remember the criteria. Index fossils need to be found over a large area for only a short period of time. So our first step, we need an index fossil that must be found over a large area. This means the fossil needs to be found in each outcrop. That means it needs to be found in each location. So here we have a blue line going up to show you that an index fossil needs to be found in outcrop A, B, and C in order to be considered an index fossil. That means it's found in a large area if it's found in all three outcrops, all three locations. So let's go fossil by fossil. Let's start with fossil W. Fossil W is found in outcrop A, there's one in outcrop B, and there's also a W in outcrop C. That means it's found in each outcrop, it's found in each location. We can consider that to be widespread. Now let's look at fossil X. Fossil X is found in outcrop A, it's found in outcrop C, but there's no fossil X in location B. So it cannot be an index fossil because it's not found over a large area. Fossil Y is only found in outcrop A. That can be an index fossil because it's not found in all of the other outcrops. Fossil Z, it's found in outcrop A, there's some in outcrop B, and there's some in outcrop C. So fossil Z also meets that criteria. But there's another criteria that has to be met. Index fossils must also have existed for a short period of time. And what that means is the fossil can only appear in one layer. These are what I mean by layers going across here. So I need you to remember that fossil X and Y are already out. They're not index fossils because they didn't meet the first criteria. So we're only going to focus on W and Z for this step. So let's look at fossil W. Fossil W, it appears in outcrop A in just one row. It appears in outcrop B in just one row. And it appears in outcrop C in just one row. That meets the criteria. But let's look at fossil Z. Fossil Z appears in outcrop A, but it appears in two different rows. It appears in outcrop B, but in three different rows. It appears in C, but in two different rows. That's not going to work. It needs to only appear in one row. So, uh, fossil W, it's found in all three outcrops in one row each time. 
That's what makes it an index fossil, fossil W. So now we have a general rule that we need to follow. To identify an index fossil, the fossil must be found in only one row in all columns. So fossil W is found in all three columns and within each column, it's only found once in one row. That's the rule you're going to use when trying to identify an index fossil. So we have other objects like index fossils that we call geologic time markers. There are other events and materials that can help us determine time periods of the past. Those two time markers can be volcanic ash deposits or meteorite or asteroid ash deposits. So I have an example for you guys. 65.5 million years ago, an asteroid hit the Earth and the dinosaurs and other organisms went extinct. Boom! There's the asteroid. Kill the dinosaurs. Well, when you have a big volcanic eruption or a big asteroid impact, that impact is going to lead to a lot of ash, dust, and debris. Eventually, that ash, dust, and debris is going to settle and deposit on the surface of the Earth. And that's going to be captured in the rock record. So here we go. This is a layer of rocks. And I want you guys to focus on what I'm pointing to here. This is debris from an asteroid impact 65.5 million years ago. We call this the KT boundary. It's the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary time periods of the past. That's the point in the rock record where the dinosaurs went extinct. I want you to focus on that dark layer right there. That's the ash from the debris after the asteroid impact. That ash deposited on Earth and became part of the rock record. So similar to an index fossil, volcanic ash and debris layers are considered to be widespread and they represent a short period of time, which proves that these can also be similar to index fossils and important geologic time markers for us. I want you to look at this diagram here. We have three different columns of rock layers, and each rock layer contains volcanic ash. After a major, major volcanic eruption, the ash can spread in locations all around the world and become part of the rock record. And since the volcanic ash is found in all three columns and in one row in each column, we can consider it to be a geologic time marker just like an index fossil.